Okay, I'm broadcasting today from my uh, uh, Wi-Fi connection, so I will be, I only have one computer screen I'm working with today, uh, and so I will come back and double check questions when it's time to review stocks. We already have one request to review a particular stock, and so we'll get that taken care of. Joining us today from Dallas, Texas is Mike Traeger. Good morning, Mike. Good, mo uh, good morning, but it's actually afternoon yeah, that's here. That's right. Uh, and then good evening. Is it evening there in uh, Austria there, Michael? Or in Switzerland, excuse me? Evening. It's now uh, 8, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. All right. Well, we're ready to get going. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for the little interlude uh, going into... Um, uh, no no uh, webinar last Friday, but uh, I hope to be able to provide uh, uh, a webinar next Friday. It depends on where we're going to be. We've dropped anchor in Paragool, Arkansas, uh, where I'm visiting my mom, uh, who is in a um, assisted living facility here in Paragool, Arkansas. And for those who uh, uh, want to follow us? I've been put, my wife and I have been posting travel log videos uh, on my uh, not the YouTube channel, but uh, actually to my Facebook account. And so, uh, if you do friend me on Facebook, be aware that I am a very conservative guy. So I kind of follow that uh, that bent in uh, my certain you know certain types of my post. So, uh, so if you're offended by conservative thought. Uh, you may wait for the reruns of the uh, the videos, which who knows when they'll be up. <laughs> okay, thanks, David. Um, so let's get going here. I want to remind everybody that all the materials we present are for training purposes only. Traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Uh, here's Michael's uh, disclaimer. And uh, Michael, you, this is still accurate, right? You're still with MCOMP6? Yeah. Uh that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I hadn't ac actively uh, managed my blog in the last month, so so I don't uh, uh, think that there are uh, some Swiss uh, visitors there. But uh, yeah, okay, we can make it short. Well, yeah. I mean, heavens, you've been on holiday for uh, what the last uh, three months? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, I was. Uh, I think it was <laughs> no, 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 it, it was uh, I think ten, ten days and uh, okay, just just uh, just check in think, on you. I, I, no, I, I think I think tw twice about seven to ten days. Okay, and so yeah, I mean I I love the way I, no. Yeah, and sometimes I was not there on Friday, and then you were not there. So. And so no, I love forward that we have now. Uh, at least uh, a webinar. Yes, and so hey, here's here is a this is me, and I'm poking the bear, man. My daughter-in-law accused me of poking the bear, and I know that uh, many folks who join us for the especially the Friday webinar think that Mike Trager and I poke the bear too much. Uh, but I, I just wanted to just you know get this one picture of me poking the bear. This happens to be at Bass Pro Shop at, in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, apparently, the original home of Bass Pro, and what a, an amazing store this place was. They had, you know, believe it or not, they had not only live fish, snakes, and all that kind of stuff, but even live alligators um, in the shopping areas. I guess that those were to to catch uh, shoplifters because it was right near the front exit or front door. And um, and so, yeah, Joe wants you to know, Michael, you got to love a guy who takes his vacation. So anyway, so here I am poking the bear and, you know, Mike Traeger, I don't know if you want to make any comments about that except this is a really big grizzly bear. I choose to not make any comment at all. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, when I get back to Hawaii, I've got to really get back in shape because I'm developing a bare belly. <laughs> anyway, so um, remember the Active Train Traders, we are about training. Uh, we've, we've, uh, I've got to post some recordings for training the, on fixing bad trades, but then next week we're also going to go and have our regular Wednesday night uh, training session on the 24th. And... Uh, 
it will be, uh, I will basically answer any questions about, um, uh, answer any questions about fixing a bad trade, but then uh, um, we're going to be talking about, you know, staying on the proper side of the trade going into uh, the new year. So how are we doing for the market right now? Um, after making a new high, this market has basically done nothing over the last couple, uh, last four days. Uh, we made a new high on Monday, then churned with indecision. NASDAQ, same thing, new high Monday, churn with indecision. Russell, new high Monday, churn with indecision. I mean, it was just a ditto across the board. The um, one of the things that is very interesting um, is that the volatility index has been remaining exceptionally low. Uh, it actually got down to around 10 on the VIX uh, earlier this week, and that low, that type of low hasn't been seen. Uh, I think they were saying uh, since about 1998, Mike. Does that sound about right? Um, could be. I haven't checked the chart on, on the VIX, but yeah, it's as low as it's been in years. Here um, I'm in contact uh, with uh, a guy who is uh, specialized on volatility tra trading and he says, so he has not the statistics, but uh, he's doing this for over 30 years and he said uh, it happens about every 10 years and uh, that so, no, he, he, he took, but it's it's basically the same. Um, he said that we have now, I think, about 25 consecutive days of very very low volatility. Yeah, and that happens about every decade, and uh, in. In, in most cases, it didn't uh, end up well. Yeah, yeah. In most cases, it didn't end up well. And I'm not going to go and throw out the bearish perspective of this, but uh, I did find it very interesting that earlier this week we were stopped at. And I, uh, oh gosh, where we stopped at? Um, in the middle of Kansas. Uh, we stopped in the middle of Kansas to spend the night. My wife found an article that was in the, uh, believe it or not, the USA Today. Uh, article in there, uh, in their financial area, and I don't get my financial news from USA Today, uh, but I found it very interesting. There's a big article in there about one, the lack of fear, lack of volatility, and this next section, the big money guys making noise about the market dish conditions at these levels. Uh, one guy, Bill Gross, was basically saying that uh, the at current levels, he is neither a buyer of, of um, the market nor is he a buyer of bonds. Uh, and then um, Icon, what was I, what's Icon's first name? Carl. Carl, thank you. Yeah, Carl Icon said that currently that this market is a mirage. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, but when the big money guys start making noise like that, it's either for a couple of different reasons. One is they expect the market to go higher, and they, therefore they want a little bit of a dip before they can get back into the market, uh, which is what I'm sitting here waiting for. Uh, or secondly, they really believe that, that things are looking uh, negative on, you know, for the long run. Uh, Fed meeting in September, but in the meantime, you know, we, we, you know, don't fight the trend, you know, but at the same time recognize. Yeah, or they're already short. Good, good point, Joe. Uh, don't fight the trend, but recognize that there is significant negative divergence, at least on the daily charts, and that every upswing has to rest or must rest at some point. Um, not to, saying we're going to go into a catastrophic correction or anything at this point, but what I'm saying is, is you know, we may, it may rest going sideways. That's what the S&P did uh, a couple of weeks ago. It just rested going sideways. So comments on that, uh, Mike or Michael, or both? Go ahead, Michael. Well, uh, I agree. Or I, um, I, I looked, uh, yeah, closer to your mic, Mike. Sorry, I think now it's better. 
So I, I agree, I share, I share the views uh, one to one. Maybe a little bit update was what's happening in Europe. I mean, um, that's not really unusual. Uh, the first two weeks of August are holiday season in, in Europe and, uh, and uh, there's not much going on. And uh, in July, there was not really much noise about it, but uh, there were uh, discussions about uh, what to do uh, with the Italian banks. They have uh, quite big banks with a lot of uh, of, of junk uh, bonds, mm. okay. and, and uh, they, they recognize this. And the Italian prime minister wants that uh, the government helps out, the, the Italian government helps out, and the European community says, uh, no, that's not the way forward. Uh, they have to kind of play the, the European uh, rules. And uh, it, it turned, they, they found some, some, some compromise, then a couple of weeks, uh, ago there was there was a decision that uh, or I, I, I'm not uh, aware uh, what, what, um, how the the government process exactly works but uh, it now seems that they are not allowed to uh, that the Italian government helps them out so it's uh, as I say I, I think it, it, it's it's quite a severe topic, um, and I'm astonished uh, how how little noise uh, you hear. Okay. And the other thing is, uh, credit uh, some uh, some major global European banks, uh, Deutsche Bank and uh, Credit Suisse. These are maybe the the two ancient one. They also have uh, quite a lot of. Uh, or too too many junk uh, bonds and are too too little capitalized. Okay, Mike Traeger. Yes. <laughs> Same question. Yes. Just what you uh, say the um, state the question again. Um, it's just basically you know here's kind of my take on what's going on with the market. Uh, um, and we will have a, a question back for um, for Michael about how do you think Brexit will resolve, but we'll come back to that question. But the question, Mike, on the table is just basically, um, you know, here's what I was basically kind of going through that what I'm seeing that could impact the market either one way or the other. You know, how do you see things? Well, uh, I mean, you know, we've had we've had a big move up uh, after that two-day sell-off after the Brexit referendum. Right. And, you know, we've commented before on some of the weekly webcasts about, you know, the energy that's required to make a move like that. And, you know, after expending that much energy, there, there has to be a rest before, you know, the next move happens, whether that move is another leg up or whether the move is, you, you know, a, a pullback to a reasonable area of support. And so we're seeing the the um, you know to, the the rest phase to be expected after you know having made that that big push up. I, I also think uh, for the next couple of months, I think it's pretty much a, a given. Well, two things I think are a given. Number one, this big push up after the Brexit referendum was hugely a result of central bank buying. Okay. Um, and now the central banks, I think, have a vested interest in not letting the market fall. And I think the Federal Reserve has an interest in um, not letting things get turbulent before the presidential election. Right. So I don't, th I don't think we're going to see a major correction between now and November for those reasons. Okay. Although I think a, I think a major correction is way overdue, I just don't think it's going to happen in the next couple of months. Okay. I don't think the central banks are going to allow it. 
and um, you, you know there, there'll be a little pullback here and there, and then a little you know advance here and there, and and a lot of treading water I think over the next two to three months. Yeah. So from a trading perspective, and we'll get we'll get back to the Brexit question. From a trading perspective, is uh, this could be a time where we move in a very narrow range. And so, uh, you know, a range-bound market can be traded, but dadgummit, you just, you know, uh, have to be very careful with it and lower your expectations. Like if it has a, uh, a 3, 4, 5% range, let's say, or the stock you're trading has a 3, 4, 5% range, is understand that if you buy at the bottom of the range, you're probably not going to get a 10 or 15% move. And so be ready to take a little bit of profit off the table as it's doing its thing. Um, then yeah, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly, and it's also if you're uh, an options trader uh, or you're learning about that, it's probably a really good environment to be selling premium. Yeah. Um, look, looking at iron condors on on the indexes, you know, things of that sort. Yeah, and you're not going to get quite as much as you would because of the lack of fear and lack of volatility in the market. To the Brexit question, uh, before you jump in on this, Michael, because this question was directed to you, is how do you think Brexit will resolve? Um, there was an interesting article in IBD about that. Uh, um, I think it was either last night or uh, a copy this morning, basically saying, you know, Brexit, it, it's, it's appearing as if Brexit was no big deal and that actually it may benefit the Brits more than what all the the you know the chicken littles out there were saying uh, as Britain is pulling out of the the European Union um, and you know striking a blow for for national sovereignty again and that it may in fact benefit Great Britain and they may be stronger than ever and uh, and uh, but. You know, we can all join together and, and sing a chorus of God Save the Queen. Uh, but, Michael, what is your kind of take on Brexit uh, as you're seeing it unfold in Europe? Well, I think globally it's not a big deal. And, uh, and maybe mid to long term, it's also not a big deal. I mean, Norway, uh, Switzerland, these are... Uh, the other two economies not not being part of the European uh, Community, uh, of course, this, this kind of, so, uh, UK is, is is much bigger. But uh, I mean, they they will find a way. So I I, I think that's that, that it's not really that uh, that uh, that uh, a, a tragedy. But uh, I think short term, especially maybe for the next uh, couple of years, it's, uh, I could be wrong, but I'd say it must be bad for, uh, for the UK because the UK is, is not in a strong position uh, regarding uh, the economy and the industry. Right. Basically, they, they uh, took a huge profit. Uh, because they're they're the only English-speaking uh, finance center in Europe, right? And uh, and uh, they they can trade and uh, and with, within the European Community with without any borders. And uh, if you want, this is an advantage on paper. And if you don't have this paper anymore. Uh, you have at least short terms. You have problems, and you see it right now. Uh, the the banks are um, basically there are no openings uh, anymore. Okay. Okay. Job openings. That's ah. really was uh, kind of from from one week to the other. You, you could see this. And the second thing is the real estate market almost crashed. Ah, okay. Well, that's something that uh, yeah. Because it's, yeah, yeah, that that would make sense. Uh, when there's no borders, it kind of lets a free flow go across the borders and buying and selling and all that type of stuff. But at the same time, once the borders get reestablished, it will take a little bit to work that out. So good points, guys. And but as said, I think uh, one of of our last conferences. I mean, currently, it's nothing has been decided. I mean, right. 
there is the vote that they will introduce the exit, but uh, as, as of now, uh, they, they even didn't start neg the negotiations. Okay. They will start about uh, Christmas time or even New Year. Gotcha. So, okay, excellent. Let's see. Um, let's take a look at where we were with the percentage of stocks above the 20-day moving average uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were up at 82.71. Uh, but let's take a peek at it where it's at today. Basically, we're down here. What I find interesting about the particular ch this particular chart is that it is it is revealing at least for the majority you know the bottom the last part of August it dropped down to about 50 percent and has come back up but it's just content you know kind of chopped around here um, not and we you know we may look at at a choppy period for several you know we've already gone um, you know almost a month's worth now at the same time so this is telling me that It's a little bit different than it was last year where the S&P was up here making new highs and the percentage of stocks above the 20 day moving averages up there lingering about, you know, uh, 56. And of course, this is the, the uh, picture of the NASD, uh, of the uh, 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 NYSC. Uh, but this chop here is showing me that, okay, there's a lot of stocks out there that are are just in this churn that we talked about earlier. And as we see with the spiders, the spider has been churning now for um, about, you know, almost the last uh, two to three weeks. Uh, not, nothing is saying, hey, it's time to get short. Uh, it's just basically saying uh, we made the, the current upshot that started um, way back in, oh gosh, when was that? You know, certainly we got that bounce back in June after the Brexit flash crash, um, but that things after that had a real healthy rebound. But across this area here, we have, have been, yeah, just a slight little uptrend, but it's been kind of choppy. And so, um, Mike Traeger, you seen anything here? Well, it's, it's the same kind of thing we've commented on before. Um, we know that the indexes we like to watch are, are cap weighted and heavily influenced by right. a relative handful of big stocks like, you know, like the S and P, the Dow, and, and uh, the Nasdaq. And so you can see higher price action, higher price levels in those indexes without seeing broad participation of the larger market. Uh, supporting that because what's driving it is really a relative handful of stocks, right. and that's what this chart is telling me. Also, if uh, you know when we look at the um, you know, the index charts themselves here in a moment, you're going to find that the new highs that have been put in by the S and P and the Nasdaq and the Dow have not been confirmed uh, by the broader, more democratic indexes that are not cap weighted, right. like the NYC Composite and and the Russell. Correct. And uh, I think this chart just sort of, you know, goes along with, with that scenario. Yeah, because it's so much as if you could say, okay, the, the Russell, the NYSE is kind of down. It's not down in this range because this isn't a reflective of price, um, but we see this pick in new highs here. And I suggest going and checking out, um, There's a, I sent out a link uh, that showed another website that Mike and I look at occasionally. You can go and check that out and uh, you know, throw in, and that's one of the things that I have noticed that's different this Mike, time, Mike, is that uh, when you looked at those charts that was the spy, the S&P compared to the S&P, percentage of stocks on the S&P above their, their you know, 20-day uh, moving average, in the past as we were making new highs, it was quite elevated compared to the NYSC, uh, but this time around, it too is more or less showing the same pattern as the uh, NYSC slash, you know, in even the Russell. So right, and, and and if you if you think about it, uh, and we know that this recent rally has been driven by you know pretty heavy buying but of stocks and ETFs, you know, by the central banks, and the central banks can print. You know, money, as much money as they want, and use it to go buy stocks and ETFs. Yeah. So if they're 
continue to do that, and they're playing around with you know billions of dollars. Which stocks are they going to buy? Yeah, exactly. they're going to buy the big cap names. They're going to buy the Apples and the Microsofts and the GEs and the Exxons. You know, they're they're not going to be buying things like um, Planet Fitness and, and <laughs> yeah. you know stuff like that. And it's those big names that drive the indexes that we um, that we watch and we refer to. Yeah. What, Mike? Michael? Russell's goes up too. Yeah. Yep. So uh, here's the NY. Uh, here is the uh, 200. Uh, the stocks above their 200-day moving average. This is the monthly chart, and so as you can see, that here's where we finished the month of of uh, July. Now in the month of August, it has pushed up with more stocks participating in this current upswing. Uh, this is above their 200-day moving average, and so what that's also telling us is that basically we have a bunch of stocks that are kind of in between support of the 200 and resistance of the 20-day moving average. So it's kind of like one of those kind of stuck in the middle type of, of zones. Uh, last time we, we checked, this was up at about 69.5%. Uh, and uh, again, the spiders pushing to new highs. I'm using that as a reflection of the, uh, the SPX. And in this particular case, we're showing that, yeah, stocks have moved, you know, about, you know, 70% of them have moved back above their 200-day moving average. Long term, that could be positive. Um, and so we'll, we'll sit there and go, okay, let's see how this strength works out. Uh, Joe said the RSP is outperforming the SPY, though. The RSP is, that's not something I follow all the time. Mike, you familiar with RSP? I think the RSP is a non-weighted, you know, a non-cap oh, okay, weighted yeah. index for the S and P. Uh, of the spider of the S and P. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I I now I now it jogs my memory. I remember that. So uh, here's where we're sitting. Here's where the all the indexes are are sitting as of about nine o'clock this morning's Pacific time. The Dow is up for the year, six, you know, about six percent, six percent on the uh, S and P. Also above the highs, you know, previous highs from last year, uh, both on the Nasdaq and the uh, and the composite. These indexes above the above the Russell are weighted indexes. The Russell is a non-weighted index, and as you can see, the Russell is still below the high that it made last year. Uh, one of the things that came out earlier this week that I thought was interesting is how uh, one of the Fed presidents started making noise about it's time to raise rates again. And it put a little bit, bit of a jostle in the, uh, 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 or at least halted temporarily the advance of the Russell uh, because the Russell is small cap and have a larger impact when the interest rates do change and go up because of what they have on loan. So let's take a look at let's take a look. Oh, there we go. At what the indexes are telling us. This is where I got to move things around a little bit. So SPX, and you'll see as it takes um, this the the broadband on on my uh, connection. There we go. Pop and open. Okay. What I'm initially seeing on the uh, the SPX, and this is kind of interesting. Now this started this move back here. Uh, let's say it started back here on um, July 12th, and we're having a very nice little what appears to be the left head potential head and shoulders type pattern. Uh, head and shoulder type patterns, are at least uh, bearish head and shoulder patterns, topping patterns, are 
they're good, but they're not as predictive as you would you would anticipate because a lot of times they put them in, but by that time something some catalyst comes along and pushes the market higher from there. But it is something to at least be aware of, um, especially as we're starting to see this weakness come along. But as you can see, for the last uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. Uh, the S&P is doing something very similar to what it did over this last 13, 14-day uh, period back in uh, the July to the early August time frame until we broke higher. Uh, also recognize that the daily price action, um, this was fairly uniform where it would drop down to about 51, uh, 2160, top up about uh, 2175. Now the, the past highs at the 2175 level approximately uh, is acting as a level of support uh, for this move and then we have a new high up here at uh, 2194 and so the anticipation being let me see if I can draw another I'll just throw a fib on here is if I go to this high again um, pr current price action kind of hammering the moving averages over a little bit, but we still have a pretty good extension away from the 50-day moving average, which just happens to be almost at the 23.6 retracement level at 2146. Could we see a healthy, just kind of like a bounce back down into that area? Um, sure. Um, in between now and let's say the end of September, uh, it is typically a, Eric, have the slides caught up now? Okay, cool, thank you. Um, the the um, August and September time periods tend to be, uh, have a bias towards, a, you know, a weak market, uh, but the weakness we may see going forward is just a sideways move and we tie that into what Mike Traeger had said about the Fed's going to do whatever it takes to ensure this market does, doesn't go into a massive correction. Um, watch these bounces off the 20. If it breaks the 20, look for you know something back down here about the 23.6. A healthy, just to give you a, a, a little bit of a, a primer on this, a healthy pullback according to Charles, Charles Dow, of course, would be down here in the 30 to the 60 percent range um, into the magic fib box and that's what, I, after a significant uptrend, that is typically what he considered a healthy pullback uh, that would then lead, provide the springboard to go into a, a more significant, you know, uh, or a continuation of the uptrend. And right now we're just uh, not seeing that. We're it, basically the stock, uh, the index is just kind of, m you know, moving in that lateral horizontal uh, price range, without any uh, uh, indication that it's going to, you know, push higher. And so we'll see what comes about with this on a weekly basis. Um, interesting weekly candle because this is an outside week, if you will, and normally. Normally, uh, an outside week would be considered a negative sign at the end of an uptrend, but we've had several of these along the ways up, and the market has continued to push itself higher. So, Mike, anything? Um, I'm not seeing all the charts because I've got it. Um, one of the things that I'm keeping my eye on real quick here is clearly we have some negative divergence here. We have some negative divergence here. On the uh, on the weekly charts, the momentum has a you know nice negative divergence, and it's looking very interesting. The uh, S and P uh, when the true strength indicator gets up around the 40 to 50 uh, uh, point level, is when it tends to want to turn back over and go into at least you know a resting pullback. So, Mike, what do you got going on this? Well, we've, we've 
spoke in the past couple of weeks when looking at the weekly chart about how the price action was getting away from the shorter term moving averages and there was too much space between the candlesticks and, and, and the moving average lines and that there would have to be either a bit of a pullback or a sideways consolidation right. until, you know, they sort of met up with each other, which is exactly what we're seeing happening here the past couple of weeks. And then while we're still a little bit away from the moving averages, we're not as far away as we were a couple of weeks ago. Right. Because the moving averages, have, you know, they lag, and, and so they've spent some time getting caught up. And what we expected to see happen, you know, has been happening. Just a lot of churning. Decision, as indicated by two weeks worth of, you know, doji type candlesticks. And um, nothing, nothing terribly remarkable. Uh, just sort of a sideways resting, consolidating market. Yeah, exactly. And so I want to throw, what was that RSP? I'll take a look at before. I have to go back to that. I'll talk about the uh, the NASDAQ, and then we'll move back to the Come on. Now you've got a pretty slow Wi-Fi connection there. Oh, I do. And um, it was working really great a little bit earlier. And it's my hotspot on my on my phone is what I'm having to use. I'm going to go over to mom's apartment here a little bit and see if, because I set her up with a nice Wi-Fi. <laughs> Remember, you're in Arkansas. <laughs> Tracy, what kind of comment is it that? Was, I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> are you saying that? Now, is that a reflection that all things are slower in Arkansas? It's a pace of life. Well, there we go. Okay, similar type action. I would almost, I kind of like the NASDAQ here uh, from a couple of, of respect, uh, aspects. Is one, it has been much more controlled and a lot less sloppy than the, uh, uh, than the S&P, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, at the same time, let me uh, put a track on this from here up to here. Uh, when the market is making these higher highs, um, the thing to do is after you get a bounce and, you know, your first FIB retracement was based on this level here, but now we have a new high that was made on Monday, you can throw in another FIB retracement and see how it operates within that. Uh, you can also do a... Uh, uh, FIB extension off off of uh, uh, some of the moves to see where those line up, but uh, I, you know I just do a real quick check to see okay here's the moving average prices come down hammered against it. And what's in, what's interesting is this this you know this week has been the first week uh, since uh, June 27th where the where we've had multiple strikes of the eight day moving average. And it's been hammered over fairly nicely, but we've still not dropped back even close to the 20-day moving average, reflecting the NASDAQ it has been a little bit faster than, um, uh, the, the, a little bit stronger than the S&P. Eric, the slides cut up yet? Mike? You're there. Okay. Uh, on a oh, we're not on the end. Not on the RSA, but we're not on the RSP. We're not still on the NASDAQ. Okay, we're still on the NASDAQ. And as you can see, what we've got going over here on a weekly chart, we've got an outside day. Again, this is the first sign like this we've had now in uh, seven weeks uh, since the market bottom and, and started to rise. So this is a first little, I won't say I call it, I will not call it a kink in the armor, but I will say that it's something that could be indicative of, okay, hey, yeah, now we're going to get the kind of pullback we're looking for that will potentially give us a trade uh, into the end of the year. What would be interesting, because of the uh, the Fed's intervention with the market, what we 
may see is a you know a little bit of a, a stronger pullback going into September, but then you know if the Fed refuses to raise rates in September, um, which will meets about the 20th and the 21st of September, then I can see the market rallying. Uh, into the November time frame until we know the results of the election uh, and then uh, uh, it will go where it needs to go after that because you know it's almost regardless of who wins the election um, the market may say may go you know we've had enough and it's time to really go into a rest period and maybe by the time the election's over, people, well, never mind. Never mind. Let's see. RSP, RSP, RSP. Yeah, it's a little bit slower than we would anticipate. Then we'll get over the Russell really quick. Thanks for the reminder, Eric. Uh, yeah, when the bandwidth is a little bit um, not being pushed through like it should be, the slides are a little bit slow and popping up. So while we're uh, waiting for the slides to, to pop up, Guys, I'm looking at, uh, uh, going into next week, I'm looking at uh, WOR to the upside. I'm looking at PLNT to the upside after a pullback. Um, I'm looking for potential downside trades with potentially Netflix. And I'm looking at a, a trade that could go either way with Tesla. Uh, uh, I'm also looking at the inverse index ETFs which are starting to look a little bit interesting. Um, and so here is the, and so like I said, I do not normally look at this. It seems to be a lot, this is the RSP, which is the equal weighted ETF. And it certainly seems a little bit more stable than the other ETF. Um, but not, you know, not a lot of comments there. Here was the, if we just take a real quick look here, we can see that it has gone up uh, to Monday's high. That was a move of about 11.5%. I don't know what the S&P was up during that time frame. I know that the NASDAQ was up about 14% from the low. So, and what may be making this look more calm on the weekly chart is this big uh, candle here, which is probably a misprint on the uh, on the ticker. Russell. Say, it is. There we go. Uh, Russell, as, as um, we can view with the Russell, and again, let me take this out of here. And in reality, we're looking at the, this move for the FIB retracement. We're going to turn it into a FIB extension uh, from this high here to this low here. Uh, and as you can see, it has jumped up 138% retracement of this move here, but now it's it's holding right there, uh, looking a little bit better than the S&P. Um, but uh, we'll see what you know transpires. We've got a good high in place at uh, 12:43. We've got a good low in place down here at at the moving average. The 20-day is just above the 123.6. Uh, retracement, but it also corresponds with these previous highs over here, and that in turn has, turns out to be a real good, you know, springboard to take it up a little higher. But it needs to get above this 20, uh, 1244 level. Um, 
one of the things that is evident on every one of the charts that we've uh, that we're going to be looking at is this is basically this negative divergence that's going on a daily chart negative divergence that's going on on the momentum and the uh, the uh, TSI into territory where you typically get uh, some pullback uh, and so it's a in this case it's above 50 and if we check and just go back over the days, let me get rid of that. And if we go just extend this back in time, as you can see, it 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 gets up when it does get above the 50. It doesn't stay above the 50 for real long. It can be several weeks, but uh, this is the first time it's been back above the 50 since um, uh, November of two, uh, correction October 2013. And normally, it, like I said, it doesn't stay there long, but it may just move right back into a pullback like we saw uh, with this particular uh, time from uh, July 2013 pullback, got back up in there, pullback, and then started weakening. But I think this is a really good chart, Mike, also because it shows that while you're getting this negative divergences, that the price action itself was still continuing to, to be pretty solid and move up. Until you know, until finally you get the final top. It did get a lot more uh, wide and loose uh, as the momentum was falling out, uh, and so that's something to look at. And we covered that in a training a couple of weeks ago, where you go into consolidation, and if you break out, you're going to get a nice, you know, you're going to go run up. But then it fell, went into another consolidation. So watching those consolidations, we could be, you know, we could very well see the price action go into consolidation where it would bounce between the 1200 level and the current level, which is at past resistance from the previous uh, high formation. And so that's what I've got on the uh, Russell question uh, it is the breath indicator versus the SPY breath is good when RSPP outperforms the S&P okay or the SPY thanks Joe appreciate that so any comments Michael or Mike on the uh, on the the market itself right now Well, no comments on my part that haven't been made already. I okay. Think. Okay. So here we are with that. Yeah, I, I joined. I thought I have also no no strong opinion. Okay. okay. Uh, I will not take I will not take the potential of a downside off the table, but I, I'm looking more at a sideways move. Uh, for the market to show more or less symmetry with what it did back in the earlier July time frame where it just moved sideways and then broke up. Um, we may get a slight pullback, but, you know, clearly the path of least resistance is right now up. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll have to wait for our particular pullback points to be able to get into it, which we have not gotten any of those here of late. Uh, Mike or Michael, your path of least resistance? I would tend to agree with you in the uh, short term. Okay. Short term meaning, you know, the next several days to a few weeks. Right. Um, for the long term, I have a different sentiment. Okay. Yeah, your, your long term sentiment is probably like mine, Mike, is that the eventually the weight and inertia of everything that's going on under the surface with the market will lead us to this. Yes? Um, for the people, and this might be my final comment for today, uh, for those of you who get, you know, the things that Dennis mails out, um, you know, his daily updates and his uh, weekend, his weekend updates, occasionally I write a little article or a column for the weekend ones. There, there should be one coming out this weekend. And for anyone who's interested, it goes a little more in-depth into why um, the, there seems to be at least, uh, Dennis mentioned earlier in the webcast, you know, some of the big money or some of the big names are very bearish on the market. Right. And uh, I go into a little detail about what underlies that bearishness. 
Okay. Yeah, and uh, that'll maybe be uh, just uh, just cynical, but maybe they went short and uh, now they are bleeding. <laughs> that could be. Well, nice. well nice. given, it, it's a given that they're all short and they're and they're sort of talking their their book, their short book. They, they have a vested interest in wanting to scare people into selling, but they're short for a reason. And and. Um, and you know the the little column I write this weekend goes into some of those reasons. Okay. And Gary, which links are you looking for? Yeah, Gary, yeah, what it, it comes out in the traders report that I send out every you know every weekend uh, for the premium members of the Active Trend Trading System, but it also is included in the uh, uh, just market update that I do on weekends, also called the Art and Science of Active Trend Trading. And you should get a cop uh, a link to that once it's uh, posted. And uh, so, okay. Hey, here's where we're sitting uh, as of the midsection of August. Um, uh, we have basically uh, continued to move up from where we were uh, uh, on the 5th of August. Um, Strategy three is still our, our best performing strategy. I, I am still working on closing this gap. You know, if I don't close this gap and just our, we, our monthly returns continue along the same line, it's going to put us out at the end of the year at about 32 percent, uh, you know, 30 to, to 30 uh, thirty to 34 or 5 percent, 30 5,000 worth of gains on the 100,000, which will be a, a 30 percent return for the year. Uh, here's one of the strategies we, we like to use, strategy number three, and as you can see, this is on the first part that we started back on September of 2015. We continue to push forward. Uh, we have paid for the underlying $9,000 investment, and now we've gained 9,000 plus another $7,500 on this trade. We're up 84%. As soon as it hits 100%, then I will close this position. Uh, and I've got all the way until January, the uh, expiration in January 2017, I will close this position and then start it again with uh, the leaps out in 2018. Here's a trade we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was a pre-earnings trade that, uh, to be honest with you, I forgot to close on the 11th. It turned out well. We entered the trade here on the bounce off the 20-day moving average, uh, and it kind of zigzagged around, expecting a, anywhere from a 5 to 10% move after, you know, moving into uh, earnings. Didn't get that prior to earnings. But we got a positive earnings report. It jumped up, and so last Saturday or last Friday, closed out at our target was 21.26. We closed out half the position at 21.53, and it looks like it is continuing to strengthen up. This is one of the, the stocks that I would look at adding to the position PLNT uh, on this bounces off the eight-day moving average. Um, and I'm holding the second half. If I don't add to it, I will hold the second half uh, for either a 15% target at 23.28 or a trailing stop loss down at 20.90, which would mean I'd be dropping back down into this breakout level. And so, talk, and as I say, stock may return, uh, so we'll add to that as appropriate. Uh, here's a, uh, uh, one of the strategy three trades we did earlier. Uh, in the, this is a seasonality trade on gold. Uh, we jumped in it way back here on 622, and we would take a, a little bit of profit every time it bounced up, and we finally closed the whole uh, trade out when the GLD jumped up a beer about one, over 130 on 82. Uh, so we closed that out for a, a gain of... Uh, about $2,000, which 117% on the uh, total profit, uh, total position. So uh, we'll be back in San Jose, California on uh, the second Saturday in September. We're going to be talking about staying on the right side of the trade. Uh, this coming Wednesday night, we're talking about seasonality. Does it work? And then I'm still working on these videos to get them out to everybody. 
and uh, and we will continue on our road trip starting next Thursday. You look at my time here. So uh, here's the pillars that we work with with the active trend trading. I as I say all the time, it's the system, and then you add the strategies to it. I like three strategies because it keeps them basically manageable. And if you're not a member of the Active Trend Trading System, or Trend Traders, uh, here's what's offered in our monthly uh, membership. And if you want to throw in the early warning alerts, here's what's on top, you know, goes with that. Uh, Mike, you and I need to get together. Maybe we can do it while while I'm down there in, in uh, Dallas. Uh, we need to get together and do another uh, video for our just a real short update on what's going on with the active trend uh, with the early warning alerts. It's been a crazy year with the with that system too. Right. So, anyway, hey guys, ha we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. And now I'm ready to Michael and Mike. Thanks for joining us. You guys always uh, bring a wonderful addition to our uh, Friday webinar. And so now I'm ready to look at. Uh, I'm looking ready to look at some stocks. Is there an ATTS training on uh, HTF? Well, Dorothy, what's an HTF? High tight flag? Yes. Uh, the answer to that question is um, just the only training that's on it was where we went over when I when I went over and did training on each one of the significant IBD uh, uh, signals to show our their patterns to show where the early uh, earlier entry was on them, and it's in the in the archives somewhere. Okay, so war. What is? It? Okay, let me go over here. My wife and I have definitely enjoyed this trip across the U.S. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, we're driving uh, driving from Denver, headed east to um, from Denver headed east to Kansas, and and I don't want to say Kansas is flat, but yeah, it's pretty flat. Um, and so, Dorothy, I put out a list, our, our, um, I'll be updating that list, but for this week I'm looking at WAR, PLNT, and uh, while this is loading, there we go. Okay, WAR. Yeah, Tracy, let's take a real good, uh, good look at WAR. Uh, W-O-R is one. We know we have really great support down here at 42 because that's where the 50-day the moving average is. Uh, it on a weekly chart, it looks like it may be reaching some of its, you know, uh, that previous breakout level, and so that's what makes it very attractive at this point. Now it may blow straight through the 50 and drop the, you know, drop the swing low here, uh, but I would say, you know, it's in a position where a buy on it, you know, either. Anywhere in there, because this is such a, a, you know, it doesn't move a lot, but anywhere from where it's at, which is up here at 42, 42.40-ish, uh, yeah, 42.38, uh, down to the uh, down to the 50-day. Uh, if you get a close below the 50-day, get out of it. Uh, and then, because what it may do is do one of these numbers here, where you've got this going on. And this going on, so it may be in a downtrending channel for a little bit, but uh, it did stick its head back up. It's coming back to retest that. Uh, if you want to be more comfortable with a potential trade on this, is look for a, a break above the high of the low day, which would also be a bounce off the eight-day moving average. Um, yeah, this this is what I'm liking liking right now. And like I said, you've got the bounce off the 50. So if you take a bounce off the 50, it would be the you know stop loss would be a 4% drop from 
4% drop from the entry price or I would say a close below the 50-day moving average because it's looking like it's starting to do one of these kind of patterns and sometimes those can be very powerful. So let's see what else we got here. Da -da 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 -da. And so question on, on uh, strategy one, Dorothy, we were in on, in, we traded three stocks on strategy one uh, over the last month. One of them came out with a 2% loss. The other one came out with a 3.5% gain. The other one, we were still in part of it. Uh, and um, uh, that's the PLNT uh, trade. And I'd like to add more to that BX. Oh, okay. What does Blackstone do, Eric? Okay. Um, Eric, you're absolutely right. You had written me about this one earlier. Uh, double bottom is in place. Um, and so we can util you can utilize any bounce back against the... Uh, the 8 or the 20 as a potential entry level. Uh, the one thing that is a little bit of concern is it's pushed up here. Uh, this last push up has been on, on exceptionally low volume. That could be the time of year. That could be, you know, uh, several things. Uh, it's going to get a break one way or the other at this point. Uh, the other thing you could wait for is, well, Given the condition of this, I would not wait for a pullback into that, you know, into the 8 and 20 week moving average. I'd be looking at, you know, looking to see what is, where it's bouncing off the 8 and 20 day moving average. Financial services. Okay. I hope that helps. Uh, another one, Dorothy, you ask about is the, I think it's BBC? No. Yeah, it is. BBC. I hope this is the one I'm looking for. It's not the one I'm looking for. What's the biotech? Um, and I don't know if I have that one in place. IBB. IBB is looking also kind of interesting. In that, uh, you know, and here's, to your point, Eric, here's a multiple bottom uh, consolidation sign breaking out from consolidation. And so if this breakout does hold and we get either bounce off the 820 day moving, uh, weekly moving average or if it stip holds here and breaks a, above this flag line. So I would say, you know, uh, it could be a buy anywhere from where it's at. A stop would be just below that swing low um, or a breakout of that flag line. And hopefully the, uh, the uh, oh, what do you call it? The, uh, TSI and the momentum would start turning around. So I like that one is another one for this week. Uh, let's see what else did I get everybody's stock RSP da, 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 BX we talked about Nugget. <laughs> yeah, Nugget is if you can stomach trading Nugget, it can provide some wonderful moves. Uh, but again, it, the question is, can you stomach trading Nugget? Uh, it is clearly a stock, uh, an ETF that needs to be purchased as close to levels of support as possible, uh, because you don't want it to wait. You don't want to wait for it to get into its move, because then it, it really gets whacked out. But you want a nice definable level uh, to be able to move out. I would do nugget with a very, you know, small piece or small investment. But as you can see, Nugget has done quite well since gold started turning around. Um, it ha may have a negative effect. Nugget may be, have a, uh, a negative impact if 
the um, um, if the um, interest rates do in fact rise. So let's see. Anything else? War Nugget BX. I miss anything earlier on? Okay, with that, folks. Uh, yeah, we did. Gino, if you're still there, I'll get on these really quickly. Uh, T W L O. Yes, I do like Tesla, and uh, that was my other, well, I like Tesla. Tesla could actually, basically, it has a squeeze thing going on right now, and it could go in either direction, but it appears that it is building up a lot of momentum, so that once it does make its decision on the way it's going to go, Dorothy, it, it could be a significant move. Um, it looks like they are going through with the purchase of um, the um, Solar City. Uh, and so we'll see how, you know, Musk, Elon Musk, tw you know, twists that information going forward. So TWT, what is this? Twilio, looks like a new entity, um, came down here. It is in the process of a pullback. And it is new. It is a new entity. Does not have even any volume yet. So I'd have to double check on this one. Um, uh, let's see. We ask about this. Gino, Gino. Yeah, I'd have to go back and double check on this to see what kind of volume it's generating and all that kind of stuff. Um, but a new entity, and I'd want to know what the fundamentals are on a weekly chart. It looks like it's putting in a shooting star, uh, and it is extended away from its moving averages. You'd want to be wanting to wait until we get on a, where it reapproaches the moving averages, which may be just a retest of its breakout down here at the $45 level. Uh, whoops. And one last start, and then we're going to call it a day, and that is UBNT. Uh, UBNT, nice breakout, or back up in, or at least back up into the resistance. No, it's above the resistance where it was on this past high, about fifty dollars, uh, but it is way extended away from its moving averages. Uh, if it moves sideways until the moving averages catch up, which it may be in, in fact, doing right now, may give an opportunity to go into a trade. If we expand, I just want to go back and take a little bit deeper look here on the time frames and as you can see if we just highlight this area here it's not quite back up to past highs over here and it looks like it has about a 10% move on up to the past highs again not in a place to buy it right now uh, is it on the weekly chart but uh, on the daily chart, yeah, this you know just below 50 level it looks like you know that support is holding and will it break above the 50, you know, 51 level is the big question. If it does, that should give it enough. Because what we have going on here, we've got a surge reaction. We just went into a new surge uh, up here. And so it's probably just about topping out with that and looking at that. And so you, it looks very, very, very strong. Let's take a look at the daily volume. Uh, this little bat, last little bit has been on lower volume, but since we just made this new, you know, high in this particular trend, uh, that is not, you know, a major concern at this time because you had really strong buying come in when it came out uh, after earnings. Hey guys, I'm going to call it a day and uh, get this recording up to everybody. Uh, look forward to seeing you on um, Wednesday evening if you are a premium member of the Active Trend Trading System. And uh, until then, have a wonderful and great weekend, and God bless everybody.